Hello, everybody. My name is Joel Filderman, and uh, welcome to the Dog Trainers Connection. I am not a dog trainer, but these other people you see here are. We get together, we discuss topic, come up with some thoughts, some ideas, sometimes some answers, but we always have an interesting discussion. Uh, today's topic, uh, Valerie, I'm going to let you introduce today's topic because you are uh, the uh, expert on it and also will be the uh, instructor on it uh, for uh, both uh, trainers and uh, people using service dogs. So why don't you go ahead and introduce this topic today? Hi, I've been asked, sorry. I've been asked to talk about Nipopo kind of on the fly here, <laughs> and I'm honored to be able to talk about it. It's a favorite topic of mine, and I um, I would like to know what questions you have about Nipopo is a training system. Um, the inventors like to call it the language of modern dog training, and it uses a lot of very old uh dog training theories that we've had for a very long time that have been developed so we're using we're talking about um the four quadrants from skinner and thorndike and um taking examples of how operant conditioning had worked that a lot of the books that we talk about that one of the books we talk about extensively in nipopo is don't shoot the dog which is a mm. clicker training book written by a dolphin trainer who's also trains dogs and um, we use a lot of the information contained in her book about clicker training in an operant way. Um, we study Sapolsky and dopamine jackpots, and that's how, how do we create more reward for the dog in the chemistry of operant conditioning. And we also study the talent code, which is a book on how to create genius in average brains by deep practice and um master coaching and what was the third this third thing in there skipping my mind was the combination of all the different studies from the different researchers who have been applying um negative and positive reinforcement corrections aversive stims over time the goal of the whole program is to create training for dogs that the dogs want to do on cue with heart and soul and that they feel very invested in the work that we're doing. Hmm. Um, the school itself has two portions. There's a silver school is five days of um, theory and applied learning, I mean, uh, theory and uh, classroom learning. Mm -hmm. And then five day, the gold school, which is five days of applied theory and practice on the dogs. And most of us who are going forth and teaching it have done those courses over and over and over again with many dogs um, mm -hmm. and practiced it for years. Um, the Bellins are retiring from doing gold school themselves now, and they're teaching a, the new silver school. Um, which is the larger classroom they had in the past, and they're and, and they're they're students. they're the ones who created this. Is that correct? Or, they or created this? Yes. Yes. And Nipopo, for those who don't know, am I correct? It stands for negative, positive, positive. Yes, I should have repeated that. So that's I okay. Forgot. That's all right. The um, so negative reinforcement, positive reinforcement, and positive reinforcement. Um, if any level of tension or pressure applied on the dog through the leash or directional or body language and the dog, it's supposed to be mildly uncomfortable. It's important to understand this is mildly uncomfortable, uh, like standing in the sun and realizing you're warm and moving into the shade. Mm -hmm. You have owned that choice. We made the body felt that the need to make something different because mm -hmm. of an uncomfortable feeling and moved over. And then there's a sense of relief and ownership in having solved the problem. The one to get out of the sun is quite natural and people understand how to do that but we don't always add up throughout the day how many little problems we solve that we feel really good about the collective ability to control our environment by understanding how to turn off mildly uncomfortable feelings. Mm -hmm. sure. um, that's a really amazing skill set that um, many dogs, given minor challenges, can start to solve their own problems in creative ways. 
So we use operant conditioning and lots and lots of the second PO, the knee PO, the first PO is the dog, the dog's um, self confidence and the mm -hmm. knowledge that he solved the solution, the release of whatever pressures were on him for that period till he figured out the puzzle. Mm -hmm. And then we add food or whatever motivator that dog likes most. Okay. So also, before we start the work, we assess the dogs for the things that are going to make them most happy to want to what work their for. What their reward is going to be, I right. guess, is really what it comes down to, right? Yeah. Right. Which so, also sorry, changes. kind of bounced around a little bit there. Yeah, it also changes as you progress. Yes. It can change. Yes. Yes. I, I can actually use this to improve dogs that don't like food for rewards who have poor diets or poor food drive, which typically means that they need some other kinds of mental stimulation. We start with toys. We might start with environmental agility. We find out what that dog loves. And my own dog, Lagatha, I took her the Great Dane that I was referring to. I took her to the Netherlands when Bart invited me to my first silver and gold school. And she didn't work for food at all. She was recovering from a bad Giardia infection. She infection. She worked for a, approval and praise. Mm -hmm. That was sure. the there one are thing many, there are many like that. Many. Yeah. And now she has an amazing food drive. So we've rehabbed her food drive through and her weight. She gained 20 pounds in the two first two years wow. of the Nipo Pro program. Yeah. And 20 pounds that she needed. She mm -hmm. was underweight. So we've used and, it for I sorry, I, I didn't mean to That's interrupt. Okay. Uh, but many dogs like to have some of the pressure because they want hmm. to excel or do something or feel accomplished. Mm -hmm. So they like to have some of that pressure put in. And as they progress in learning, sometimes they want even more because uh -huh. it's it's just like having to learn hunting skills. They want the you know, challenge. Just, just walking to the store and getting something mm -hmm. is not as satisfying as figuring out how to get something or do something. It really engages them. So yeah, that's marvelous. It's marvelous. Mm. Hmm. And Valerie, Leo. why I was going to ask you, I noticed that in one part of the school, the practical, it looks like it's with mm. Huskies. That the oh, students, that's Nelson's course. That's some, that's, that's com completely that's, yeah, different. So, I, so I, I teach with two different schools. Oh, okay. <laughs> and interestingly, <laughs> they're polar opposites mm. of each other. Oh, but okay. what they both are is relationship based models. The, Nelson uh, Hodges teaches and and he uses no tools except for martingale and a, and a leash mm. and we're reaching the dogs on a very primitive way and on Nipo Po we're is especially adapted yeah. for yeah. domesticated dogs that like to work in conjunction with people um, and but both of them yeah. are about making but sure anything, that we really are the um the um both of them are incredibly um how the dog feels about the work how the dog feels about the relationship how well the dog su succeeds at everything we do we understand is based on the quality of the relationship and the work that we do with them so okay. um the two are not incongruous though with one we use a lot of tools and a lot of outside things nelson doesn't even train with food he's mm. trying to reach the dog on a different Mm. at reaching the dog and training trainers how to understand the very very early ethology of dogs whereas the nipo po mm. is truly reaching them in, a, in their domesticated place as well as their primitive place mm. that is that's that's cool and i guess that's why so, you would use the husky because more primitive and totally primitive yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so but we can nipo po a dog like a husky and i can bring up a mal as long as I fulfill the drives of each dog and they both actually have really similar high prey drive survival mm -hmm. instincts and things like that. But when it comes to wanting to do um, really complicated training things and having skills that, um, that Malinois are the ones that you're going to see. So Bonnie, to finish answering your question, when I and it's how it's related to how I think about Nipopo and why I asked initially 
how does everybody else perceive it already is because a lot of people out there, and I would say that 90% of people who watch it online or on Facebook platforms and think it's only applicable to sport dogs and that, um, that pet dogs don't need Nipopo or dogs that aren't Malinois or shepherds. Um, in all honesty, I use it for all dogs and we may not have the same goals, but you'll see more Malinois in that end of it because the, like the vast amount of people who early on embraced it and who are pursuing it avidly are working with sports and military and police type mm -hmm. dogs. But a lot of us are breaking that mold. Mm. And I have found it profoundly useful, particularly in the fields of rehab, um, because we're working with dogs. Um, Joel and Bonnie, you're familiar with Prince, mm -hmm. the white dog that comes that yes. is now. Yeah, so Prince came to me. I actually used the Nipo Po philosophy and all of the techniques associated with it to change that dog's brain chemistry from being hyper adrenalized and hyper, um, hyper, hyper cortisol depleted. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was in a really bad, even health state because he was always chronically Just anxious and he bit a lot. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. he was always biting. And um, mm. by practicing calm and stabilizing his behavior, stabilizing his reward system and how he perceived events in his world, it took almost a year to get him to that point. It wasn't the mm -hmm. fast fix and it wasn't mm -hmm. meds. We just kept practicing. How good do endorphins feel? How okay. good does behaving stable feel? And now the dog is making amazing choices and is coming to group classes. He's still not a hundred percent fully involved, but even the other day we were able to work with the clicker with him and he didn't bite me. It was amazing because he, <laughs> he stayed calm and in the work. Um, we were able with the, the, the broad knowledge of how the biochemistry works, how we can rewire neural pathways with deep practice and myelin happens around your neural pathways mm -hmm. when you practice something over and over again. And the investment of the motivation, that was the third thing I was saying about from the talent code, motivation, deep practice, and good coaching. Those three things are the Bible of Nipopo. And we okay. want to make sure that we provide those things to the animal. And so for this dog, the motivation was to seek his peaceful feelings and his stable feelings. And he did so well that he looks healthy. His I, He can play without his eyes losing their color. I didn't know uh -huh. what color the dog's eyes were for the first four months. And so it's uh -huh. a lot, there's a lot we can do with it. Uh -huh. And, and in Valerie, you started it out by asking, does anybody have any questions about it? I'm going to ask that question now. Does anybody Please. have any questions about it that they want to talk about or that they have uh, some ideas about? I'll just say this. You know, this is, a, I think, a great conversation based on what's going on, um, like all, you know, these days about, you know, us and them, the us and them, and, and uh, you know, you're you're a criminal if, if you strap a collar on your dog, if you make any kind of a correction, you know, you should be arrested. You know, you're no dog trainer if you need to use that equipment. And, you know, like um, amazing. Things. And I, every, every day there's more and more of this rhetoric. And yeah. uh, it, it, I find it, it's a fascinating thing. I mean, so I heard a claim that the group that screams positive only is a small group com compared to the, the group of dog trainers nationally and internationally. That group is a small group, but they're the loudest group. So there's you know, <laughs> hearing, right? They, you know, they're small, but they're loud. Wow. I, no, I'm just kidding. Squeaky <laughs> wheel gets the grease. <laughs> <laughs> to put it nicely, <laughs> well, there's another way of putting it, but yes. <laughs> and, and if you uh, sort of use education as your backing, right? I'm a veterinarian. I, I have a, um, I'm board certified in behaviorism and blah, 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 blah. And you can't do this and you can't do that. And you got to do this and you got to do. And then, you know, people spend uh, fortunes of money um they are usually kind of stuck with forever meds and mm -hmm. not a lot of progress in the actual behavior of the dogs. 
you know, when you listen to the plans that were laid out for them, you say, boy, I wonder if the veterinary behaviorist has ever trained a dog. You mm. know, well, they went to school. I know they're smart, but, you know, you can yell all you want. But, you know, I saw a, a video of Bart Bellin years ago with this black, I don't know what it was, you know, if it was, it was a Mal or it was a Dutchie, I don't know, it's just like, you know, it wasn't a pretty dog, but man, oh man, this guy was on a field and he had the most incredible control that I had ever seen. And that's when I learned about Nipopo, you know, just the, the existence. I was like, how on earth did this guy get this? And this is a happy dog, motivated, like, let's go, go, mm. go incredible and i used to show it to my clients and say don't expect me to be able to train you to train <laughs> dog that way because i can't even train my own dog that well <laughs> you know it was just incredible incredible so you know the, it's just this is a good topic i think today because you know valerie's well versed in this and i i've seen the proof you know i've, I've seen enough videos of dogs trained in that style where they're not beat down i can't mm. Look at a dog. I mean, and you know, Lauren knows, but we were trained back in the 70s, you know, you know, how to use the leash and collar. I'm I'm grateful for having learned that. But you know, we weren't always looking at the dog to see, like, you know, with the ears up, was the dog smiling? We could give a crap if the dog was smiling. The dog needed to hear, you know, the dog needed to do, right? And it did, and it did. You know, we mm -hmm. were this is a whole nother ball game now. This is a way to use negative reinforcement in a way that really presents the picture everybody wants to see. And it's not make believe, you know, it's like they're, they're true emotions. You can see this in the dog. So, you know, it's a beautiful thing. And, you know, I think people need to like pay greater attention to that type of outcome using, you know, op having an open mind and, and using all the tools available to them. You know, you can't, you can talk Skinner all you want, but you got to have some skills. Right. You, you know, here it is kind of, right? here it is. I love it. No question, just comment. Okay. L yeah. L Lauren, I was going to ask you when you, when you trained I'm I'm my alley. Yes. For when you work with her or your dogs for commercials and shows. Um I was just curious what you because I've seen the incredible things that you get them to do. What piece of the negative, positive, positive do you use? And I remember you bringing up your litter of puppies and what I remember watching some of your videos, the videos and thinking, yeah. boy, she's putting those puppies through some rigorous trying to get through things. And some of them are scared. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> you know, the big and, deal and, and you have stress wonderful dogs and, and stresses. And, and, and this is what in regards to what Steve was talking about, I think there were really gifted trainers years ago, you know, who, who, who started off, they just had a feel for their animals, but they weren't able to define things. Mm -hmm. And as they knew that there was a certain amount of negative that you had to put in because life is like that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they knew how to relieve the pressure. Because there's always going to be pressure. And so, and, and, and what to add. And as we began to define it, it became, a, yeah, and, and, and certain people picked up on it. All they saw was pressure. Mm -hmm. So initially, it was all leash, collar, jerk, negative, lots of pressure. Dogs would crumble underneath it. And those that survived were the ones that worked because they were hard enough. And, and that's how it went. And, and when I started my classes years ago, um, I had realized that, that also there, there was the need to really instill the positive in, in conjunction with the negative. And of course, when I started my classes, my first complaint was that she uses food. That's how long ago it was. Oh my God, she uses food. Um, 
And so then we, as, as that dialogue increased through the years, more and more people got on the food bandwagon and it became, it flipped. The total yeah. dialogue became all food and no negative. And we all don't live in Candyland. So unfortunately, it's, it's a lovely idea if you have a very controlled environment, but for working with dogs who won't live in your house, uh, your, your life is not unfull of stresses. Mm. So it's it's good to be able to place stresses and teach dogs how to how to not only cope but but reliably work through stresses in, in their minds mm -hmm. that that they perceive you know to a positive outcome that fits the entire group and and it's nice to hear that more and more people are now starting to talk about balance, which is something I've always been involved with. So mm. on the movie sets and, and in places you really need, it's always stressful because nothing is ever the same. And when you get there, what they told you or you think you're going to do is never the case. Mm. Sometimes it is, but it's, ne you know, it's usually you get there and all of a sudden somebody's doing something differently or the actors weren't told uh, mm. the, what, what you were told or the prop person, you know, gave you the wrong information. And because you're the animal handler, you're not always privy, especially with dogs. Mm -hmm. You know, if I had exotics like an elephant or something like that, people would be a little bit more respectful, <laughs> you know, of the animal. But dogs are supposed to be, you know, these trained mechanical things. Right, that you and can just so, change at the drop of a hat. Yeah, that's supposed to. I mean, so, mm -hmm. you know, coming and and with Allie, especially, who happened to be, and most of my dogs are very smart and are very willing to work with me and and. And my whole training process has always been something of applying stress or teaching them how to get through stress. So you apply a certain amount of what you think the dog can handle. And then you also make sure that there's a way that he can find his way out of it. Mm -hmm. And then you can increase mm -hmm. that and, and, and add that to their repertoire so that they know that they're basically you know, they're able to manage even if you're not around mm -hmm. you know and um and and in an environment which is just full of stresses and heat and lights and people and and mixed signals and and all kinds of things and um i think it it's it's good that we discuss this because people have to do it with their kids too mm-hmm you know, we're so caught up and let's keep everything nice, nice. And it's not. Right. We have no. to learn and, and people need to move faster. And I hate to start going into global warming and stuff, but we have to be able to recover and find ways to recover faster and faster and faster because the, the whole planet is moving faster. Life is moving faster. Yep. And it's really important that dogs know how to do this because mm. when you go into a family situation with, with their dogs and children and mm. husbands who are in and out and people dropping food on the floor and stuff, it's not going to be, it's, it's really not easy. And no. so, um, that's my my take on it for yeah. that's what I did with my dogs. That's what I've always liked to do with my dogs to help them feel more confident, but I've never avoided the stresses. And I always mm. taught that in my classes mm. and just about the balance of having the dog figure out and also people then learn. So then you start having your your camaraderie where you start learning to read your dog and seeing his signals of how he's pleased, not just the simple wagging tail that people think is appropriate sure. for, because dogs can wag their tail and kill something. Mm -hmm. you know, it's just not <laughs> the same. So it's, it's really important. This is a great topic. Oh, yeah. Great. Jeff, you want to say something? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm 
certainly not an expert on Nipopo. In fact, I first heard of it through this forum, I think a couple of years ago, we were babbling offline about it. And that's when I first researched about it. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, I'm, I'm sure Valerie will correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not an expert. But what I like about what I learned about it is that there's a system, but there's flexibility within the system. Mm -hmm. And yes. that's, that's my whole approach to working with dogs. Sure. Uh, you know, I, I, if, if, if I'm rigid in my approach, it'll probably work on a lot of dogs. But if I'm not flexible in what dogs are communicating to me, I'm going to miss out on opportunities to help more dogs. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's kind of what I, I, when I, it's been a while since I researched it, um, you know, but that's one thing I liked about it. The other thing is, uh, you know, it, it's wrapped up. It's all the stuff we do and wrapped up in a nice cute name. I mean, I, I'll be honest, like, that's true. Nipo There's nothing wrong with that. That's totally you know, true. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. yeah, if I say I'm going to use negative punishment or negative, negative anything nowadays, people are going to be like, whoa, what do you mean? Right. But if I say, oh, I use Nipopo, <laughs> they're going to be mm -hmm. like, oh, what's that? Right? <laughs> um, so no, I'm just being honest because people have their perceptions of negative reinforcement, sure. positive punishment, positive punishment. As soon as you say those words, their mind goes somewhere, right? Right. And so that's I, I, actually why I had Valerie point that out. It's like, yeah, you know, okay, so this I, is what it is. <laughs> I, I like the package it's wrapped up in. I like mm -hmm. that, you know, it does use the quadrant, but you also have avoidance in there. Extinction comes into play. Yep. I think primal choices are wonderful, uh, especially if you have like working dogs where, um, you know, sometimes it's hard to motivate them in a domestic setting. So I think something like Nipopo would probably come in handy in those situations. Mm. Um, you know, so I, I, I think it's, again, I mean, if, if someone asked me about it, I would say it's a really good, consistent system with flexibility, right? Because that's, that's, that's what my interpretation of it was just from the research I did on it. Obviously, Valerie, she's an expert, but, um, you know, I, I think it, it's, and I mean, just tapping off of what Lauren was talking about, one of, you know, once I adopt a dog or bring a new dog into my home, especially my personal pets, not so much with rescues because I have an obligation uh, outside of my, my requirements for my dogs to be my pets. So I'm just talking about my pets, my pets. I, I, you know, once my relationship is established and they come into the home, we, I am seeking opportunities to expose them to stressors. Mm -hmm. yep. um, I want my dogs to be stable in as many situations as possible. And, you know, again, we were talking about the last couple of session last couple of forums you know the he said she said of what's going on it's really starting to heat up again in the dog sure. training community and I, I you know the only argument and and I don't want to I don't want to uh criticize an entire demographic of the dog training community because there are force free dog trainers. There are positive only dog trainers that expose their dogs to stress and they work them and they make them really reliable. Um, but there are a, a good portion that just avoid situations altogether. Mm -hmm. Like that, that doesn't make it, especially for me, that doesn't work for me. Like I, you know, I mean, may, maybe that's how they live their life. Like they avoid conflict and they, you know, if they don't like crossing three lane highways, they don't like, I mean, I want to, I want to learn. I want to teach. How do I get across that road? Like, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, how do I accomplish that? Uh, is it going to be a tool? Is it going to be hot dogs? I don't know, but right. I, it's my job as a trainer to find out what motivates that dog simultaneously improving the relationship with the dog. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause I, I just, I don't, I don't believe they're, they're, they're independent of each other. I think mm. promoting a solid relationship while you're navigating through this, it's like, it's a collaboration, right? Yeah. And I think that's how trust is built, mm -hmm. uh, which is why when corrections are used appropriately, they are used after the relationship is developed generally, after, yeah. if it's a tool, after the tool is introduced properly. And contrary mm. to what, you know, the babies with the wet diapers say floating around the world, right? You know, <laughs> um, you know, we're not dragging dogs all over the, over the place. Um, pressure when used generally is momentary and it's short-lived. 
it's not constant pressure for the rest of the dog's life. Right. And they say, oh, well, why does the dog have the e And I don't do e-collar training with the exception of blind and deaf dogs. Uh, but, you know, when you're using pressure, people are like, oh, why is the tool still on? Um, uh, well, we don't know the answer to that because all you're doing is watching a 30 second video on the internet. Mm -hmm. We don't know why the tool is still on, <laughs> right? But that's not what they say. They come up with all this stuff. And the, the biggest problem I have is when they say, oh, well, studies show, and I've been having this argument for 20 years. I have yet to see the study, any of them, okay? <laughs> I can tell you what the studies are that are, that are criticizing operant conditioning, specifically the use of tools. Mm -hmm. right? The studies, they're exposing these dogs to pressure under sustained periods of time. And that's why all these quote unquote studies are coming back that tools do more harm than good. Has anyone here, and now we, we got, I mean, I'm just guessing we got over a hundred something years of dog training here on this screen right now. Has anyone seen the study on video? Anyone? Has anyone I'm... seen the study of the tools that they use to do these studies to show that tools don't work? Anybody? No. Which tools None were they them. supposed to be about? What's that? Which tools were they supposed to be about? Pick one, anyone, whatever, whatever one they want to go after. Yeah, I. The point, uh, the point the is, there is there is no video of mm -hmm. the studies because they, you know, you know how they get those cortisol levels to skyrocket as consistently and persistently as possible. It's called they animal talk to abuse. the dogs with the tools. <laughs> right, right. It, it's literally at. <laughs> The positive community is literally abusing dogs to prove that tools don't work. And how do I know that? Because I have yet to see the video. Show me a video. I, you want, okay, you're going to show me stats? Okay, fine. I can write up a spreadsheet and throw some numbers together real quick. No problem. Show me video. The only video I see when tools are used are good, happy, well-adjusted dogs. Mm. That's what I see because Steve mentioned it, right? Years ago, we were worried we were so focused on our handling and the response and not necessarily the dog's body language or their state of mind, right? Now we're taking all that into consideration because, because we know a happy, relaxed, balanced dog is certainly going to be more motivated to work for their handler, mm -hmm. yep. you know? So um, anyway, I rambled a little bit. I got off track, but bottom line is, is uh, you know, if anyone is new to dog training, I would certainly look into something like Nipopo because again, um, it brings the best of everything into a nice, neat little package. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's, it's a really, and again, it, it, it's the application aren't just working dogs. It's, you know, for domestic pets too, which is kind of yeah. cool. And I, I, I just wanted to go ahead, Valerie, then I'll just, I thought it was really interesting that um, Jeff said something about um, the Nepo Po, the package and the tools. And I realized that earlier someone had asked me about the remote collars. I use remote collars, but that's not the tool. The tools in the Nepo Po package are positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, positive punishment, negative punishment, indirect reward, direct reward, um, variable reward, all of these ways that we use what motivates the dog. And the other really important thing that both Lauren and Jeff said was about using stressors and we call it the negative reinforcement and Stephen Lindsay calls it safety training, aversive, aversive training, uh, avoidance training, escape training, all of those things teach a dog how to cope with his environment. And even in his mind, feel like he's controlling the environment. But what it also prepares him for is the point at which at some point in time, which, and Jeff, you were 100% right. We always want to make sure that that dog is fully prepared for the day that that correction comes after they've learned what was expected, after they've learned how to handle the stress of negative reinforcers, how they've learned to control what's happening. And they have a huge investment in their own getting the, I, I can't remember the last time I had to lay a true positive punishment on any one of my dogs because they are understanding this, what, what Bart and Michael are calling the language of modern dog training. My dogs are hearing that a lot more clearly mm. because I'm a lot more clear in my application of those tools, which aren't right. mechanical. They are mental tools that I use to adjust my program with mm -hmm. my dog. And I think that 
Oh, I, and I do think it's a pretty package. Somebody said that too. Def <laughs> yeah, Def did, yeah. A nice package for, and the system gives you those tools to use as flexibly as possible for the personality of each dog. Mm -hmm. uh, you're never okay. going to use it the same way on every dog. I, I, that to me wouldn't make sense because mm. no dog is the same as the next. Sure. Uh, and I, I was, yeah, yeah. I was just going to say that I think that what um, all of you have said today is so important for, as you were saying, the other camp or the trainers that feel very, mm. very opposed to any of the tools that you're mentioning or um, to know that when they get a client because their complaints are oh i got a client and their dog is messed up and what happened a trainer put an e-collar on the dog so they focus on that that that's what went wrong and they become very hostile to those tools so broadly <laughs> as a group this is what those people that are so adamant about, you know, never using particular tools and that's inhumane, et cetera, need to open up mm. and to and to learn more and to consider and at least know what's out there and what's yeah. being thoughtfully done and and is helping dogs, not hurting dogs. And mm -hmm. uh, hopefully we can get there one day. I don't. I, 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 I like the fact that they're doing what they're doing. I'm quite busy. <laughs> I'm so happy to hear that. Thank you. <laughs> no, and I'm, I'm, I think it's very important that people understand that certain, um, understand that negative and the relationship to pressure Mm -hmm. are are the same and that you need a certain amount of pressure to get things moving and you don't want to over apply it and you certainly don't want to take a dump truck and bring a dump truck full of food into your house for your dog either you need that balance mm -hmm. one of my most favorite sayings that i've been using for years and i learned it in my you know early 20s at um volhard camp when they had the volhard training camps uh and it was learning takes place when perceived reward exceeds perceived cost mm. Mm. and the trick to it is not the the cost and the reward it's the perception perception yeah it's the perception and which is why this is also very valuable when you're rescuing because there are some dogs as Valerie was talking about to, bear, to begin with that are in a constant state of stress no matter mm -hmm. what you do. And, sure. and you can take that dog and put him anywhere on a pillow in the most safe environment in the world and he's already in under pressure. Yeah. And so the trick mm -hmm. is to be able to help him find ways to relieve that pressure so that he starts learning how to relieve his pressure positively in a way that works for the total environment and and uh, who he lives with, where he lives, the fact that mm. he lives with people, if he's going to live with people, mm -hmm. you know, otherwise you can't have a dog like that. And, and it's very important. So that whole idea of pressure and knowing when to add a little more pressure. Mm. I, I, my first years ago, I taught um, a, an Alaskan Malamute to retrieve. Wow. <laughs> and it was like, <laughs> I was like, people were saying, no, no, no. And it was so funny because I started with uh, a dowel. And of course, he hated the dowel. Mm -hmm. And we worked on the down. The people were wonderful and we did it. And I, I, I got him to the point where he was able to hold it with a little bit of relief and, and, and he was doing okay. And he started holding it fine, but he was really never liking it because mm -hmm. he was an Alaska Bell mutant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. But then I said, all right, we've done this a lot and he knows what I want with this. I'm going to switch to now a metal dowel 
Well, of course, the metal dowel was added, and he absolutely hated the metal right. dowel. So he then went, but look, I can pick up the wood. <laughs> <laughs> and the wood became his most favorite thing. And he started picking up the wood consistently mm. because I changed mm -hmm. to the metal. So wow. we waited. And then I said, all right, well, now we're going to add. <laughs> all of a sudden, the metal and the wood became his most favorite thing. And that's how we did it. <laughs> and so you need to have a certain amount of pressure. Mm. and switch around in order to make those things that you knew yeah you didn't really like them but they work i i'm i'm familiar with them and and uh -huh. get dogs through to the point where they're able to do just about anything mm. that is that's terrific <laughs> <laughs> um it's, we've been talking yeah. about this for a while um valerie uh Actually, I don't think Val. Yep. Okay. Yeah, there we there. go. Yep. Just uh, yeah, for us for a second there. Uh, I'm going to give you just a, a minute to uh, add anything that you'd like to add, uh, and uh, we'll uh, uh, finish from there. Oh, thank you very much. I the only thing I, I left out classical and opera and conditioning. I think on my list of tools, <laughs> it occurred hmm. to me that's supposed to be in the list. The I find the system to be incredibly well-organized and a really amazing way to teach skills that everybody's known for a long time, but not in maybe knowing all of the all of those uh, tools and the timing that's most effective in applying them and how the dogs perceive them. Um, I think that it's, sorry, we have going home now. I'm trying to stand outside because it's, I have a dog's barking inside because they're <laughs> all excited because they're going out for their last socialization. <laughs> um, but I think that I'm. Oops. Oh, you froze, Val. Maybe she'll come back. <laughs> Really, really. Um, I'm, are, you, oh, did I disappear behind the wall? You again? did. You, you froze. froze. Yeah. yeah. Between me and the router. Um, I was starting to say I'm really glad and super happy to hear that y'all have been really interested in hearing about it, and also um, understanding the idea that the dogs, that the voices that don't want to hear this now, are kind of running the show mm. but that it's not fair to the dogs and that this system is here to really 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 truly try to reach as many people as possible about how the different quadrants work and how they can be done so lightly mm -hmm. that we're giving the dogs hope of succeeding all the time sure. and then letting them meet those goals and, and mm. you know training for heart and soul that's the motto on my van mm. um and i like to do everything in a relationship-based model i wouldn't have invested the time and energy in this if it didn't if i didn't feel like the dogs were enjoying it as much as i am <laughs> yeah so let me ask you one last question valerie if anybody sure. watching this wants to find out more information about me popo is there anywhere that they can go online or sure they can go to nipopotraining.com okay and that is the central website for everybody who's teaching the system Mm -hmm. They can reach out for information about the silver schools. They can reach out for the gold schools. Um, it will. Uh, it has all of us direct access to each of the gold graduates that you could reach out to for mm -hmm. teaching, or you could sign up for silver school. Yep. But even just by looking us up all there, uh, looking all of us up on that nipopotraining.com. Okay. Uh, we're all we all have email links in there, so you can just type type it out to any of us, and there's a lot of good information about. What the goals of the system are terrific thank yeah, you we're, we're, it's kind of global i mean we're on all continents except for our antarctica i think <laughs> <laughs> okay the and they're next <laughs> yeah the, 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 the silver school they that i just attended in missouri in march a couple of weeks ago there were people from six continents and i wow. think 12 countries there 120 students and 20 of us gold students that teach it now and then um, I'll be going to the, another one in June in Missouri. And then I'm going to coach the students in the Netherlands in August. 
So it's, oh. so it's really, really exciting to be able to help this many trainers move forward with their skill sets. Mm. Super right. excited about it. That's Terrific. great. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. And yes. uh, thank you, trainers, for being here. And thank you for an interesting discussion. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, and don't forget to uh, like us on Facebook and please give a thumbs up to this video. Uh, and if you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel and we will see you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.